okay so I think we have everybody here uh, so let's get started then so um, yeah so this is obviously a continuation of the first part and the first part obviously we looked at obviously Pareto's 80-20 law and then um, we talked about obviously the revision process as a whole and then we obviously moved on to uh, specific exam questions um, so in the first part we covered more grade four five and six questions um, but in this presentation most of it will be um, on the more advanced questions so grades seven eight and nine um, but just before we uh, dive deep into that uh, let me just quickly uh, show you this um, so this is just like a recap of the last presentation so this is just basically like a blueprint almost of how to approach every math question or how I approach every math question so like I was saying uh, last week um, I don't actually dive straight in so I always spend a couple of minutes just to think about my overall strategy you see most people make the mistake of just as soon as they see a question they just start writing calculations down the page but you don't want to do that it's really best to just uh, spare a couple of minutes to think about your overall strategy um, obviously scan over the question just to get a feel for it uh, deduce what topics or formulas it'll involve because what you can do is once you look at the question um, almost immediately you can uh, sense what kind of topics and formulas is going to involve um, so already you're going you already have isolated uh, what topics is going to cover so um, yeah you should you should obviously read over the question once look for any clues and also check the marks that are awarded as well I know a lot of students don't do this um, but just take a quick glance at the marks awarded uh, because that gives you a clue on how many uh, steps are required um, so generally speaking if it's a one or two mark question um, you don't have to do too much um, usually one or two mark questions is just you get one mark for like a straight read from the diagram it's usually the answer is there right in front of you, you just have to look around a bit and maybe the second mark would be you have to give a reason um, but obviously for the three four and five mark questions um, you'd obviously have to provide more steps and as a general rule of thumb you do one calculation per step so that would give you an idea of um, what it involved and how many um, calculations you need to make uh, number three I think is quite important as well is you have to identify the goal of the question um, so think about what the question is actually asking you to do what do you have to find specifically uh, and then think about how to reach this goal so um, at this point you might have to reverse engineer this is something this is um, I use this quite often is once I find the goal of the question or what they're asking me to do I try to think okay what is the step just prior to that I mean just before that end solution what do I need to do or what would my answer look like just prior to that and just prior to that step as well because then what it does it gets you to think about the question from both angles from the front and from the back and uh, that can actually help with the overall solution uh, number four um, you know what other key information so once you've un identified the goal um, then you have got to obviously look around what other key information and facts have they given you uh, what can you uncover from that um, is there any more information you can uncover and how does that lead you closer to the goal remember they give you the information each piece of information that they give you is for a reason and you will have to use it at some point so just think about how you can use all of that information to get closer to the end result and another thing that's quite important is um, previous parts to a question as well sometimes a question is broken down into parts a b and c and just remember that parts a and b you would most likely have to use them in latter part so the answer in part a and part b you'd most likely use it for part c as well so just always you know refer back to those parts because um, it just makes it well I mean it makes it easier to calculate that final part of the question and like I was saying a minute ago you by approaching it this way you start to think in both directions so front to back and then back to front 